God um, for another day of life. Um, I want to thank Golden Boy uh, for this opportunity and um, Kim Stop for giving me an opportunity of the world title. Um, you know, it's, it's crazy how things play out in life. You know, um, I remember being in training camp for the first time with Bernard when he fought Kazagi. And never did I think I would have an opportunity to fight on the same card. Because I thought that by the time I got to that point, Bernard would be retired. <laughs> but he's still here kicking ass. And um, it's crazy how that played out. You know, and I'm just blessed uh, to have been able to be around Bernard in so many training camps and, and learn old school boxing. I mean, which is a lost art now. I mean, so um, I'm blessed and privileged to have that opportunity. Um, you know, um, I had a shot at the world title already, and I, I fell short. But um, you know, I didn't, I didn't have my, he I didn't put my head down when I lost that fight. You know, I knew I belonged, and I knew I just needed one more opportunity. You know, and here's my opportunity, and I made the best of it, man. I had a great training camp great sparring and I'm at a point in my life where I'm growing up as a man and as a fighter and mentally this is the most prepared I've ever been for a fight because you know I understand the moment you know and sometimes you take moments for granted out of immaturity or whatever the case may be but you know um, I learned from Bernard on taking care of your body outside of the ring and it's just not what you do in the camp is what you do outside of the ring, you know, and that's very important. And I did everything I had to do outside of the ring to stay focused for this fight. I'm ready. This fight's in Atlantic City. I'm undefeated in Atlantic City. It's like it's like uh, it's like a hometown fight, man. It's sort of, it's like a 45 minute ride from Philly. A lot of fans are gonna be there showing love and support. And um, I'm not gonna let them down. Um, I'm willing to go through whatever it takes to be victorious this night. I'm telling you. I'm willing to go through hell, whatever it takes. And I'm ready for that. So thank you for the opportunity, and I can't wait. Now that we introduce to you the WBO World Middleweight World Champion, Peter Kitchocklet Quillen. How y'all doing today? All right, let's first and foremost say the reason why the sport of boxing is dying because the way y'all clapping, y'all clapping like this. <laughs> it seems like y'all not excited for this fight. This is a tremendous fight. This is a, you got Bernard Hopkins, a legendary guy, you know, giving inspiration to a lot of people that they can do whatever, at whatever age. So I think y'all should be more excited for that, you know. Not even that, we got a, you know, American heavyweight over here telling y'all that he's going to be the next champion and he's American. You know, that's the American dream right there. We got a tough challenger in um, Gabriel Rosado who's gonna come and try to take my belt, something I worked so hard for. You got guys that's from overseas who's gonna try to do the same thing. And um, we can't ask for nothing less than that, you know. We got so many um, proud people like, you know, Golden Boy, Showtime, you know, my team, you know, Hook'em, Rafi, Eric, you know, Al Heyman. We got so many people. Uh -huh. Kelly, I got something for you. Hope you can catch it. There you go. Know. <laughs> uh, you know, this is this is. I'm not gonna come up here and get y'all. Well, oh, this been the, the hardest training camp ever. I can just say within this training camp, I learned so much more about myself and who I am as a fighter. And from the time I met Bernard Hopkins, who's been placing wisdom on me. Well, let's just say knowledge. It ain't wisdom unless you apply it to your life. So you know, I'm very humble with that. And you know, all those words that he's he's giving me. Um, I hope Gabriel really took that to effect because, you know, it really can help him. And I'm, I'm not taking anything away from him because, you know, nobody's struggle is grander or better than the next person's struggle. Whatever I've been through in my life, I don't try to say that it makes me better than a person. It makes me better as my own person. And I think everybody's challenge in life and everybody's um, purpose is just to find who you are and being comfortable with that. And I'm very happy to be in front of y'all and letting y'all know that I, I mature not only this as a man, but as superbly a lot of things that I, I endure you know as a champion you can just say with problems you can call it championship problems or you know what you're trying to be for your wife championship husband you know you all these different things when you're a champion it, it just comes more magnified and man I'm just super blessed and I think my journey has been one to remember and you know me believing in myself has got me where I'm at 
you know, through all the hard times. I never said I was the most talented fighter in the world. I can just say I'm the fighter with a lot of effort. Um, I'm willing to try it all. And not only that, you know, I haven't fought in Atlantic City, and me and Gabe haven't never fought in Atlantic City together. But I can guarantee you that if you did fight me in Atlantic City, you wouldn't be undefeated no more. And I'm just telling the truth, and I'm just being honest, because you know why? Um, my bumps in the roads only just got me better as a man and better as a fighter. So every time I step out there, I fight with all that passion, all that pride. And unfortunately, I'm not from Philly, but what the important thing is that I hope that I could touch a little kid that's living through a struggle and, and, and tell himself that he's not able to get the things I get. I'm going to tell him, yo, no matter where you're from, Philly, Chicago, Grand Rapids, Brooklyn, you're able to get all those things if you work hard for it and you believe in it. So I think that's the special thing about me is that wherever I go, I touch people in a special way. And, you know, Billy, you know, I, I got a lot of love for him because he, he's one of those trainers in the sport that got a lot of passion. So I know that Gabe is ready because Billy's not going to let him come up short. And, you know, I'm not trying to say that I'm going to knock him out or I'm going to do this. I'm going to just do me. And I'm trying to be the best at doing me. If I feel like that, then I only got to let myself down. You know, the fans are important to me, but if I can't allow to do things for myself, how can I do it for another person? So um, I think that not only when a fighter come up here, especially when Bernard get to come up here, y'all gotta clap a little louder because we trying to bring the sport alive. You know what I mean? They showing the age. Yeah. Oh, they showing the age? Ah. Oh, man. Oh, there you go. I like the guy with the suit on. Shout out to the suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have the energy. They don't eat right. Y'all gotta eat right. And y'all lazy. But most importantly, if y'all wanna y'all wanna give interviews with us and get interviews, man, y'all gotta be a little bit more excited. It, it doesn't feel right to come up here and, and, and talk with somebody that's doing it. Y'all got the easy job. If it was you in my shoes right now, wouldn't you want people to clap? So treat people like that, man. You know what I'm saying? This is this is this is this is super man to have a fight like this. Hey, hey, hey! He inspired me to wear a suit, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I got to show my, my business aspect. Bernard told me best, in a, in a ring, you got to be a fighter. And when you step outside that ring, you got to be a businessman. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm making sure with this fight, not only I'm going to pay all my people, you know, my, my training camp has been tremendous too. I put a lot of money into that, a lot of investment in that because I believe in myself. But most importantly, I'm going to pay my taxes and sit down on my account. So, look. Pay them first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you always gonna not be able to explain something that's doing something like I'm doing. They can't explain what I'm doing. I'm just gonna keep doing it and I hope y'all just be support. Support what I'm doing. Support God. Support Bernard Hopkins. Nazim Richardson, who also teach me a lot of things. Dante Wilder. Exactly. You see how that young guy right there, how he was speaking? You, you do you get guys like that speaking at his age? You know, that's inspiring guys like me to wanna keep doing what I'm doing. Cause I looked up to Bernard too, and I'm I'm hopefully can touch a guy in a special way where he's able to, you know, strive for what he do. So, all you guys, thank y'all for coming out. Hey, hey, thank y'all hey. for representing me. Yeah. Yeah. Sauerland Events, Wilfried Sauerland. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, before I go to the main fight, I would like to have one or two words to the heavyweight fight. Um, we in Europe look forward for a good American heavyweight to come up and although we know Nicola Fursa he has fought on our shows, uh, we hold thumbs that he will do well on Saturday because it could help heavyweight boxing. And if you look for opponents, we have got four of the top ten in the top ten, so you can always ask us and we will have someone available. Uh, to the uh, main fight, for Caro Murat, it's a very, very big occasion, and we know he's a huge underdog. Um, I had a similar situation in 1995, when Axel Schulz came to Las Vegas, and he fought George Foreman. Uh, George Foreman had just won the world title uh, as the oldest heavyweight champion in history, similar to Bernard in the super middleweight. Uh, he was 46 years old, and the journalist gave him one or two rounds before the fight would be finished. Axel Schulz put up a tremendous fight. He lost a very disputed two-to-one decision in Las Vegas, 
and I look forward on Saturday to see something similar from Karo Murat that again somebody can come as a huge underdog. I, not many people know anything about Karo here in America, understand that because he has never boxed here. And I hope he does us proud and he does something similar to what happened in 1995. The legendary Bernard Hopkins. Thanks, um, everybody, uh, for coming, and also uh, welcome to America, everyone. Thank you for saying this, right? Yeah. Okay, and um, also, um, um, Richard and Nazim touched on it um, about the future in the boxing, and especially Golden Boy, the promotion part of it. Y'all are the future. Y'all are holding the game up, Rosario and the younger guys. I mean, I'm here making historic fights when it can happen, and the bigger the name, the bigger the event. We understand that. It's not hard to figure out. Um, but obligations are obligations. And if I want to stay in the race at this stage, and being as most dangerous fighter on the planet, uh, even at 48, the belt seems to be the carrot that the young guys uh, we want to want, want to have. If you're in the game of boxing, you want to win a championship. And